Hey guys, Wes here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at making GitHub forks and pull requests. If you like videos about full stack web development, machine learning, and DevOps, then I would really appreciate it if you like and subscribe. In this video, we're going to talk about creating forks and pull requests on GitHub. So one of the really important things about open source is that the software we create in open source projects is freely distributed. And so if you'd like to make a change to an existing open source project, you can simply create a copy of that code for yourself and then work, work on it um, on your own. If you would like to contribute to a project, you can create a copy of that code and then uh, make your changes and then request that those be changes be merged back into that original project. And when we're dealing with open source projects on GitHub, creating a copy of some initial repository is called creating a fork. And so in this video, we'll look at creating a fork of an existing open source project making some changes and then creating a pull request to actually request that those changes be merged back into that original project. One of the really cool things about a pull request is that you can create it early on in the process of making changes to a repository. So this is particularly useful if you're working on a larger bug fix or a feature request. And so what you would do is create a pull request and then kind of share the ideas that you have, uh, maybe some early code, some early changes, and then collaborate with other developers on the project as you work on those fixes. So that pull request user interface really provides a nice way to collaborate with other developers as you're working on changes before those changes actually get approved and then potentially merged back into the master branch of some project. So with that, let's dive into some code. We'll use a repository that I set up for this video, but you're more than welcome to use it as a practice repository for making forks and pull requests. Um, and if you have any questions at all, just be sure to leave them in the comments below. All right, with that, let's take a look at some code. Okay, so our first step here is to visit GitHub and we'll find the project that we would like to fork. And for the sake of example here, I'm just going to fork a project that I created a couple of months ago, which is a Python epidemic simulation. I created this um, at the sort of start of the COVID-19 pandemic and was inspired by some interactive simulations that I saw in the news. And I uh, just decided to create a really crude uh, epidemic simulation here in Python. So you can check that out, but we're really just using this repository for the sake of example. So when we're working in open source, and in particular here on GitHub, and we'd like to make changes to a project, say we need to uh, create a bug fix or we'd like to otherwise contribute to some project, our first step is really to create a fork. And so I'm going to select fork here directly on the project screen. And since I have a couple of organizations set up, it's going to ask me where should I fork uh, this particular project. So I'm going to fork this into an organizational account here productive for productive dev. And we'll see this quick animation while GitHub is forking the project. And when that's complete, you should see your username or organization here slash your repository that you just forked. So in this case, the Python epidemic simulation, which was forked from my personal West Oil account slash Python epidemic simulation. So this is now a copy of that original repository. And we can make any changes that we like to our fork here without worrying about actually affecting that original repository that we forked from. So let's say that we would like to make some changes to this particular project. So the first step that we should do there is simply clone the project. So here I'm going to get the URL on the clipboard and then head over to the terminal where we can get clone. So we're gonna clone this repository down. And now I'm going to change directories into that Python epidemic simulation directory. And you can see that we're on master branch. Now the next thing that we should do here is we should configure Git so that we're synced with that original repository that we forked from. So we have our copy of the repository here in this directory, but when we fork from some original project, we can configure Git so that it will pull changes from that original or upstream repo um, directly into the local clone 
that we created when we forked. And so to do that, what we'll do is we'll head back to GitHub and we'll go to the original project page. So this will be the original project that we forked from and we're gonna get the URL for this project. And then we'll head back to the terminal and then we can actually just take a look at what the current remote is for our fork here. And we can view remotes just by typing git remote dash v. And so here we can see that this is indeed, in this case, the productive dev fork of that original uh, project. And we can see these are labeled as origin. But now we're going to add an upstream remote for that original repository. And so for that, we can type git remote add upstream and then I'm gonna paste the original repository belonging to my personal account in this case. And now if we type git remote v again, I'm gonna make the text a bit smaller here so it's easier to see. And now if we simply type git remote v again, now we can see that we have our origin, which belongs to our fork, and the upstream, which belongs to the original repository that we forked from to begin with. And now anytime we actually just want to sync from that original repository, it's a pretty simple process. We can run git fetch upstream. And then if we want to say merge from the upstream's master branch into our fork, we can just simply git checkout master here. And now we're on our fork master branch and then we're going to merge upstream slash master and in this case, we're already up to date, but this would merge the changes from that upstream into our local master branch here. And that would, in a sense, bring what we have in our fork here up to date and in sync with that upstream repository. And we wouldn't lose any changes that we have. So now let's say we have an idea, we wanna make some changes to the, our fork here, and then perhaps we want to propose those changes back up to the upstream and see if they get approved. Um, so again, this is just kind of a demo project. It's not really, um, I don't have any issues open or anything like that, um, but I will show you how you could make a pull request for a project um, if you are contributing to open source. So let's just take a look at the project here. And let's say that we made a change to, let's just do constants.py in this case. And I'm just gonna make some small changes here. We'll add some uh, sort of doc strings here. All right, so we don't need to go through and make any sort of substantial changes here, but I will just put a couple of doc strings in on these classes. And then so we'll save those changes and then run git status to see the, the status and we can diff it and just see that we added these two doc strings to these classes. So what I'm gonna do is git add all, git commit m, add, add doc strings. And then we're going to git push. So now if we head back into GitHub and we're going to go to our fork that we just worked with, and we'll take a look at the commits. And now we can see that there was a commit that was just made, the one for adding doc strings here. And then we can see that diff, uh, which indeed corresponds to our changes on our fork. And so let's say that we were happy with this particular fix or this request and we wanted to create a pull request. So what we'll do is we'll head to the original repository and then we're going to select new pull request directly next to the branch dropdown. And then we're going to need to select compare across forks because we're going to be comparing across our, um, our fork that we actually created in our account and we'd like to merge that into the base repository from which we actually forked to begin with. So since I'm in control of both of these accounts, I have a drop down here, but we're going to select from my fork here and we're going to uh, open a pull request into the original master branch. Now we get this nice interface here to create this pull request and we can leave comments for instance and we can preview, we can use markdown here. And there's some other neat features here, for instance, assigning ourselves to this particular pull request or assigning other users. We can also assign reviewers and create labels and assign this pull request to projects and milestones and lots of other sort of project related things that we can work through here. Notice that we can also see the diff. So in this case, we only have uh, these doc strings added. And if we're satisfied with this, then we can just simply create the pull request. 
And so typically if you're working as a developer at an organization, you'll have uh, some type of standard process for creating pull requests. Um, often code will get reviewed in pull requests, um, but this is just to say that there is typically some type of process. So again, note now that I am on the original Python Epidemic Simulation project, and since I own this uh, project, I can also just here approve the merge request and merge it. Otherwise, I could uh, leave comments. So we could do things like look at the files changed, and we could even leave comments on particular lines of code for the developer who opened the pull request to, uh, to examine and review. And then we can click finish our review. And uh, in this case, I'm going to submit the review with, a, with this uh, single comment. And now the author of that could come back and uh, examine the comment, and there could be some discussion about the changes made. And then the author of the pull request could continue um, making commits against this branch um, for which the uh, pull request corresponds. And then once everyone is satisfied with the changes, um, that we could then merge this pull request. Otherwise, we could uh, just choose not to merge it at any point in time and close it. The merge pull request dropdown also has a, a few other options here, including squashing all the commits on this branch into a single commit if there are more than one, and then the ability also to rebase and merge. Okay, so here I am going to just show you uh, merging the pull request. This will get merged. And now we'll see that the pull request has been merged. And so if we head back into the, the project here, we're now on the original uh, repository. And indeed, we can see that in our constants.py file, our changes have now been merged back into that original project. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, just kind of a simple demo on how you can fork a project on GitHub and then create a pull request across different repositories and uh, then potentially have that pull request merged back into the original project. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.